Hi guys, welcome to the Asking Us SEO show episode number 28 and today I want to talk to you about tips for your next website transition. Stay tuned. I was going to say boom. Thank you for joining me today and what I wanted to to run you through is some tips, ideas, suggestions, recommendations that you perhaps haven't really thought about with your website transition. Now before I get started, I've seen uh, uh, cases where it's whether it's friend sites, whether it's clients I've had years ago that no longer work with us and I go back and I want to check their website and they've got a new website and I know the old URLs because I used to work on them five, six, seven years ago. and They've got a new website, which is fine, and it, it looks better, it functions better, but, but the web developer did not, and, and it's not necessarily their issue necessarily if it wasn't really spoken about prior to, to implementing the job, but they none of the URLs even threw one redirected. So they had hundreds and hundreds of old pages that didn't even at the very least threw one redirect from their old version to their new version. And that becomes, you know, uh, problematic for them because their old pages were ranking, someone types in, you know, Palm Beach accommodation or someone types in uh, Sydney hotels, bang, lands on the URL and what do they get? A 404 error. And obviously that is not just detrimental to your SEO, but it's detrimental to your user experience. You, If my mum does that, she's going to think she she broke the internet, okay? Like, why am I getting a 404 error, which is a page not found? So let me run through some some reasons as to um, not to 301 redirect. And you must be thinking, oh, not 301 redirect. Let me finish. <laughs> okay, so what I'm actually about to embark on with an existing client is we're going through a massive new website transition. We're going through a huge website transition. And in fact, my strategy for a lot of that for the last year has been that we want to maintain at least 80% of the URLs to, to, to function more or less the same way, exactly the same in terms of, 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 of how, they, how they look. There, there is a few, um, sort of unique problems with this with this client coming from a from a system where, where it, it allowed dots in URLs. Um, so it was like product name dot 476 then dot HTML, right? So you had more than one dot in the URL. And so in actually the, the, the product name. And on the new platform, which is Magento, that's a big no-no. So there's obviously been cases where we had to 301 redirect, we just had no way around it. We, we, we the, the, the site could not simply function with dots in URLs. But at least 80, mate, conservatively 75%, and it's definitely more, but let's just say 75% of URLs are remaining the same. And that's probably probably over 20, 30, 40,000 URLs. So, the reason that I wanted to do that was to preserve and maintain our existing page authority metrics. Now, page authority is a little bit different than domain authority because domain authority looks at it from a, from a top view down. It really uh, takes the home page into um, the main consideration. Whereas the individual page authority, which might be, you know, category, you know, shoes slash shoes that's a page that's been, that, that will have certain specific page authority that's why seos when they're looking for links from other sites so they may be they're, they're, they're selling their client sells shoes and they want to get links from a, a a website where they sometimes get the link is more important if it's coming from a page that is talking specifically about that shoe and, and they're talk, talking about how wonderful that shoe is and then they then that page links because it's obviously a popular page, it's relevant, that specific page on that website is linking to the slash shoes on the client end, um, that's obviously going to provide much more SEO value. So a lot of the time I, 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 where actually links will come from is very largely important 
as well as um, you know, obviously just getting links on the homepage is most of, most of the time unrealistic because the website masters and owners and businesses don't usually send links off from the homepage. They do, sometimes they're partners and suppliers and things like that, who we work with and things and things like that, PR-based information. But generally, m most often, more often than not, it's usually a, a specific page that links. And so over time, those pages that are on the client's end, they pick up in age, they pick up in trust, and they pick up in authority, and they also just pick up uh, because they have existing links pointing to them. And there's many other factors as well. Google knows the page for a long time, it's sort of, it's been consistent, it's, it's proven um, the test of time. And so it's, it's established, you know, people visit it, you know, Google now with Google Analytics such site wide, they can see directly that people are interacting with the website. They're not bouncing off the, the, the website. They're not bouncing off this particular page and, and so forth. So with my client specific example, we didn't want to through one redirect because we did not think that in most cases, in most cases, it wasn't the right thing to do. Now I've just got a quick criteria of how I sort of. Uh, want you to start thinking about whether this is the right thing for you. Number one, is is or are the URLs structured well already? So, so let's say you're about to go on a new website transition. Do they already have a similar URL structure? Like, you know, it'd be slash shoes slash Nike dot HTML, right? Or whatever, right? And then the new website is just shoes slash Nike remove the .html, you know, um, uh, uh, Nike dash blue, or actually no, that's a bad example, just slash Nike. So the only difference is the forward slash is there and on the, on the old website it was just .html or .php or .asp. Are you, gonna, are you going to tell me that it's worth changing the URLs in that example? Absolutely not. There's no reason to do that. So have a look whether to see if they're structured well in your example. In my client's example, they could be structured better, definitely could, but they're not the worst URLs. They're not completely not mobile friendly. So while like out of three, three being they're basically like this example, I would put it two, I'll put it in the middle. Do they rank well? In my, does your, the URLs that you wanna change, check them. Which URLs, check the top 50, the top 100 in Google Search Console, in big webmaster tools, in analytics. Check which pages are generating the most amount of traffic because I can tell you, if these pages are popular, that organically, they're ranking. And, and, and so check even if they're being referred to a lot in analytics. So in my client's example, they are, we can give this rank well a big, big tick, right? So, you know, you have to consider these things. And finally, are the pages old? So with this example, the shoes um, slash Nike with the forward slash, has that been around for years? And all they wanna do is change it to .html or vice versa. Because in my client's case, over 70% of the URLs are five plus years old. And really, it didn't even really make sense, even just from the, from the age point of view, um, but the fact that they rank well and that they're relatively structured well, we chose not to do a 301 redirect. And so time, money, and investment was required to maintain the, the same URLs. So that's why some things to think about. And there are other reasons as well. Um, maybe, the, maybe the existing URLs is better for branding. But let's move on for time's sake. So 301 versus no 301 redirect. And at times, you would need to 301 redirect in the, in the example that I gave with the clients having dots in the URLs, okay? But don't let 301 redirects always and only be the default standard or the default decision or, you know, yep, new website, we're gonna, we're gonna 301 redirect the old URLs. Think about it a little bit more than that. Now, another thing is when you're moving a website and you're transitioning to another website, this is a big thing. Carrying over existing 301 redirects. You know, a lot of the time, when I, I remember when I first started SEOs, well, when we first started, it was about a year or two into my career, one of the big things was 
Um, our clients were getting new websites all the time because you know WordPress was becoming more and more popular, and they were on these old, uh, and sometimes custom-made CMS systems, and you couldn't even update a heading or a title or a bit of content. You wanted to add content, you couldn't do anything. And so a lot of the time it was we just told told clients that you know read you know move over to WordPress, which was the right thing to do. But a lot of the time, and I found out soon after. Well, hang on. If we don't carry over existing 301 redirects, it doesn't matter if you move from one platform to the other, or you remain on one platform, or you move, even if you move hosting in general, you gotta remember too, you can also keep the same hosting, but your redirects might be stored in, 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 in code itself. So make sure you talk with your web developer about any, get a history, or keep a log from the client point of view, keep a log of all 301 redirects that have taken place. Keep a log, keep an entry, keep something where you can refer to. Because let's say from a year or two down the line, you actually you know, uh, want to recall these URLs um, and you're doing a new website transition, you must make sure that when you, re when you launch a new website, all the previous 301 redirects are carried across. All right, big tip. Should you 301 redirect canonicals? Now, I've had an example, this was only two years ago, when I decided not to canonical, or not to 301 redirect URLs that were stuck in canonicals. Now, this is getting a little bit more technical for clients, um, but just again, you can just send him a send this snippet off to your web developer. Your URLs that were um, uh, canonicaled, we didn't redirect them, and what happened was we found that they actually, um, increased in 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 um, for a four errors because we didn't redirect them on purpose thinking that they weren't indexed you would look for them they weren't in Google's index so we didn't do it I recommend that you look at URLs that have been no index URLs that have been canonical and yes while the website is live it serves a purpose uh, you're solving issues uh, potential issues but if you're gonna re if you're gonna transition have a look at which which URLs no index. Have a look at um, which URLs canonical. And so I've, I've actually, um, for my client specific example, we've we're redirecting canonicals and using you know fancy code to make sure you know even the pagination pages are redirected, filter pages that were canonical to, to be redirected and whatnot. So it's very important that you do that as well. Um, and and finally, you know, it, it is a little bit more. Um, uh, this is a, new website transitions are, you know, um, quite detailed, quite complex, and so just keep an eye on 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 how the pages are actually structured themselves. So if you've got a, a page that is already sort of structured a certain way, think about whatever changes you're actually going to do to the actual physical layout. You know, you've got your heading, your content, you've got your products. Have a think about whether it makes sense to to change that layout, or this is where obviously UX pros earn their dollars, right? Because you know, figuring out you know what people actually um, how they're going to interact and engage with the website. Always look for ways to increase engagement. You know, make sure your comment box on your blog is clearly shown. Um, if on the old site things were working, carry them over. Like if you had a, if if you've got social sharing on your old site and a lot of customers use it and a lot of clients or or, or even just the just the general website audience that you have are using it, then make sure you carry it over and keep it in the same spots. All the elements and anything that was working for you from 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 your old site, when you carry it over into the new design and the new website carry those things over. You don't want to lose the functionality that's working for you, okay? What you want to do with a site transition is only improve what needs to be improved, but from an SEO and UX point of view, from an SEO point of view, don't try to rock the boat too much. Don't try to do what you don't really, don't don't just, just do something for the sake of it. Make sure that whatever you're changing, whatever you're improving has some data behind it, okay? Thanks a lot guys, if you've got any questions, please leave a comment below. And this has been a pleasure, and I look forward to speaking with you soon.